Hey everyone, welcome to Northern Viking Explorer. If you're new here, my name is Ken. I'm Andrea. And today we're gonna to be sharing our likes and wishes with you from our recent cruise on the Carnival Panorama to the Mexican Riviera. We had an amazing time. We visited Puerto Vallarta, Mazatlan, and Cabo San Lucas. And today we're gonna to share, like I said, our likes and wishes from this recent cruise. Now we had a great trip. And first I wanna acknowledge that it's really a privilege and we're so thankful that we could get this opportunity to go cruising. It definitely is. And some of the categories that we're gonna be covering today, first off the ship and the layout, we'll cover our cabin or stateroom, the food and restaurants, activities and amenities, venues, shows, the staff on the ship, which were excellent, no spoiler alert there, and of course, embarkation and disembarkation. We will put timestamps below in the description so you can easily find each of those categories. But let's go ahead and dive right into our likes and wishes from the Carnival Panorama. So for our likes and wishes here on the Carnival Panorama, we both went and made our own list. I haven't seen Andrea's list. She hasn't seen my list. I have an idea of what some of hers might be, but um, there could be some surprises in here for both of us as well. Let's talk about the Carnival Panorama ship and layout. Ken, can you tell me what your likes are? Ooh, I have a few of them. I've got some notes here. Um, so there was actually a lot to like about this ship for sure. Um, I'll, I'll go over some of my favorite ones on here. I really like the, I'm looking at my notes here, the tides pool area at the aft of the ship on deck 10 or the Lido deck. So the back of the ship on deck 10, there is the tides pool area and it kind of goes over the back of the, the ship. So there's the pool, there's the hot tubs, there's some restaurants, easy access to the um, buffet from there. So easy access to food, beautiful area to hang out. I do enjoy that area more than the main pool area. Um, they're both nice, but that was a really nice area on the ship. Beautiful view there. Yeah, beautiful Absolute views. View. That was yeah. one of my favorite places to get photos when we um, were in Long Beach. When we were taking off, you could get beautiful views of the pools mm -hmm. and going off the back of the ship of Long Beach. So that's my, my first thing. Oh, what, what's one like of yours? Um, I think the ship is pretty easy to navigate. And I'm going to combine my second thing that I really like. Is I really like this size of ship. It's big enough that it has lots of amenities, but it still feels personable. Yeah, I would agree. It's not overly sized. I wasn't um, exhausted when we got back to the, <laughs> to the cabin. We've been on other ships before where it felt like you were walking for days to get back to the cabin. Mm -hmm. That might have been because of our cabin location. We'll talk True. about that yeah. in a moment. But um, yeah, I would agree. It was not too big. Mm -hmm. um, a really nice kind of, uh, it was a big ship, but not like massive, like some of the other mega ships out there. So true, true. Um, I did like that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay for my next, like on the pool okay. deck side of things. Mm -hmm. I also did like the tides pool area. Um, there was three decks there. So yeah. three high um, when they did the parties in the evenings. You could stand around the upper decks and look over. There's the big screen there, the movies at night. Did you mean the beach pool? Um, what did I say? You the, said tides pool. Tides pool. I meant the beach pool, yes. Yes, so, so the, that's the, in the center of the ship on mm -hmm. deck 10 is the beach pool. It's the main pool. Yes. So that area mm -hmm. um, in the middle, again, there's three stories. So when there's parties, different mm -hmm. things going on, group for St. Jude, you can stand around, watch from the upper decks, um, great views. And there's lots of comfortable seating in that area. That's where you would get your towels. Yeah, you can yeah. hang out by the pool. There was hot tubs, um, a busy family area, but lots of fun. Okay, I'm gonna tell you my next one though that I really like, cause it continues from that. There's a lot of food options around the beach pool area. You don't have to go far. If you want your burger, if you want a taco or a burrito, it's right there. It is, yes. The Iguanas is right there. Guys Burgers is right there. Um, there's bars right there, yeah. super easy to get everything and hang out right by the pool. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, my next, like the Serenity area is really nice. Yeah. So if you're adults, there's a Serenity area. It is complimentary on the ship. Lots of comfortable seating around the front of the ship. There's little, I don't want to call them cabanas, but little kind of hut things you can sit in, mm -hmm. um, comfortable chairs and two large hot tubs up there as well. So those were really nice. I really like that space too. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're not sailing with kids and you're trying to get away from kids, um, that might be a cool place for you to hang out. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the general decorations of the ship. I think that was a win. 
it was very like, I don't want to say modern because I think it's modern, but not that like modern, modern as a style, mm -hmm. but it was like very like calm, more neutral colors. Yes. Um, very relaxing. I thought it was very tastefully done. Actually, but there was a lot of bright kind of Caribbean flow when you're going down the hallways. It's a, like the blue carpet with the like very bright. You feel like you're on vacation. Beach vibe yes. for sure. Yeah, yeah, that was really yeah. nice. So it was bright in that area. And I have a similar note here, um, very clean and well-maintained as well. So I think that kind of falls. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is a newer ship, but it was definitely very clean, well-maintained. Now, I think about some other ships we've been on um, and even an older carnival ship. Um, we were on the Splendor and that one definitely, I, I know it's been upgraded since we were on mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. but it definitely had an older vibe than to, to this ship. Yeah. So um, that one had a lot more brass and that sort of thing when we were on it, whereas this is, just seems more modern and the beach vibe, which is kind of cool sure, when yeah. you're going to Mexico. So um, the other thing I have, there's some cool shops on here. So um, this kind of comes back in Wishes later, but there's, um, like lots of little souvenir shops, as well as a huge candy shop, the cherry on top mm -hmm. candy shop, which was really neat. So um, if you don't want uh, your kids to see that, just stay <laughs> away from that area. But um, there's like probably the biggest candy shop I've seen on a cruise ship. Yeah, it's fun. So uh, it was really big. Um, yeah, and I, should I just keep going with some of my likes? Sure. Um, the Vista restaurant was really nice. I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. um, really nice layout, beautiful and Part of that might have been that we sat by the window, I think for every single meal um, on there as well. So beautiful, we got great views in there. And it was kind of uh, private in the area that they put us in. Uh, it wasn't noisy. There was a mm -hmm. wall behind us and it was really just a beautiful space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, that's all I have. I'm, I could go on forever for for likes. I have a couple more then. So, but before I go to the wishes, because yeah. we could be here all day just on this topic. Absolutely, there's a lot to like on this ship. Uh, one big bonus is the running track is not located around the pool, and so Ooh, yeah. you're not running between people laying on their loungers. Which, if you're trying to lounge, you got someone jogging around you, or you're trying to jog, and you got mm -hmm. people. Um, you know, just lounging, <laughs> they don't always mesh. So this was really good. They moved it up a deck and it has its own space. Yeah. Uh, I think it's that by was... the sports courts and the outdoor exercise equipment. Yeah, so. it was well done. So I really appreciate that move. And the other thing about this ship, I know you're going to want to talk about this maybe in a different area, but is the elevators. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. So that's in my wishes. Oh, I put it as a light. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, Interesting. this might be a good segue here. Yeah. So, um, That's I, the first one on my wishes right here for the ship, so. See, yeah. see, we're not exactly the same here. So I, so the new elevator system is, you're supposed to, when you get there, select what floor you want to go on. There's a screen. Out in the hallway, not inside the elevator. Yes, right outside the elevator. And the key is, this is what I think most people miss, is you're supposed to do it for every single person that's getting in the elevator for your party. So if there's three of you, you need to actually do it three times. Hit the button three times. So the advantage is it tells you which elevator to get on. And in theory, it's not supposed to stop at every floor. So that should make the elevator ride much quicker. Mm -hmm. And we did see this work quite well. So now on my yeah. transition side here into the wishes, and maybe I'm stealing your thunder, is that most, I shouldn't say most, many people just saw their floor number and jumped on, or in addition, did not like do it for each member. So it's not calling enough elevators to the floor if it's mm -hmm. only been called once. I think that's where... I mean, an elevator is an elevator once you're in. If it's going to the right place, that's good. But um, I think the confusion, I have never seen so many confused people about an elevator in my life. Um, once you figure it out, I guess it worked pretty good. You couldn't change your mind in the elevator. True, yeah. So that was one of the things. Like, if you're going to deck five, you're going to deck five unless someone else had um, pushed a different button before. So um, you couldn't change your mind if you're in the ele elevator and... There was just so much confusion over it and people standing around in the hallway kind of wondering where to go and missing their rides. So people getting a little angry yeah. at people who didn't do it correctly and just jumped on. So yeah. eh, a little extra. Yeah. I will say the good thing is you push the button and it told you which elevator to go 
sit by. Stand by. Or stand by. Well, you can sit <laughs> you if you can want. Sit on the floor upside <laughs> down. You can elevator. Sit, yeah, 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 you can go sit if you want. But, I'm next. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I, that would be a, a, I, the only good thing. I shouldn't say the only good thing, but I, I saw it more of as a wish. Okay. I don't think they're going to change it because that would cost a ton of money. No, so. no, it's a good idea though. Yeah. Um, a couple other wishes, mm -hmm. um, and I, I hate doing the wishes, but because we had such an amazing trip. We did. Um, the atrium area on the ship is not a big grand area. Okay, I have to agree. It's, you know, it's still, you can tell they tried. There's um, always live music, but mm -hmm. if you're not gonna go sit on the bottom level, there's not really space to sit. Um, I believe there was like two or three levels above it overlooking. It's where like all the shops are. Yeah, yeah. but there's not a lot of spaces to sit and just like, eat food and watch people mm -hmm. like you might on other ships where you can sit and people watch everything going by. Um, it, there was spaces, but just definitely not as grand as other ships. Um, mm -hmm. It was more designed for like a shopping area rather than a sitting area, unless you're on the very bottom floor of the atrium. So I wouldn't be like, let's go hang out in the atrium together. It no, I don't think same. we went there once. I believe there was a bar on the bottom level yeah. of the atrium, but unless you were going there, um, because on other ships, we've hung out there. When we went to Alaska in the summer, we were in the atrium area. A lot. Like, a lot. Well, there was a, a coffee shop there. Yeah. And there was um, then some more food and different kind of items that mm -hmm. drew you there. So it's a different vibe. Yeah. And, you know, that's fine. You're going to Mexico. You're probably going to be outside anyway. Um, it was just not as overwhelming of a grand entrance to the ship. So, um, and I think we'll get into that more in the embarkation and disembarkation as well. Mm -hmm. I have some more there as well, so. Oh, I might have put my notes in the wrong spot then. Ooh, okay, well, we can talk about it here. Um, yeah. And the other wish I had was, there's lots of souvenir shops and things, but they were the carnival souvenir shops, which I really like to go through, where there was, I think, two or three small, really, really, really small souvenir mm -hmm. shops rather than one large one, which it you'd step in and you were basically where you would pay and it just felt like people were watching you the it whole time. felt like you couldn't browse, like you were yeah. being watched. Even though the staff were very friendly, um, you just, yeah, it was a little intimidating. Yeah, so that might seem petty to have one that, uh, I just prefer one larger shop that seems more like a store rather than, a, it felt more like kiosks. Yeah, see, I also said that I would like more of those like general stores that you can just browse through looking for. Like I love their bargain sales that they put out, but I wish there was more stuff like that all the time in their store. Oh, like the $10 t-shirt sales yeah. or the um, purses and stuff. Shawls and covers. Yeah. I wish there was more of that all the time inside their stores. They have a lot of expensive stores if you're shopping for jewelry yeah. or high-end things. But if you're kind of just looking to spend around $50, there's not as much to look through. You kind of are looking for the carnival gear than the keychains. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Like you yeah. kind of exhaust quickly what there is to shop for. Or you can buy candy in the cherry on top. That's true. That's they true. had a big jumbo gummy <laughs> bear in there. So, um, Very yeah. true. Um, so that's all I had on my list. Do you have more stuff on there? Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, see, I think I'm stealing your thunder here. This is um, when you enter the ship because you don't enter looking in at the atrium like you do on some ships. Like, yes. we kind of entered through a more side door. And it wasn't wasn't that well, grand, like, la moment. That I 100% agree. It was underwhelming getting on the ship, and I don't know um, if they shuffled, I feel like they shuffled people in different directions. They did, they looked at where your muster station was. And we had, we got to the ship, stepped on the ship and walked down the ship, outside, mm -hmm. and stepped in right by the main theater. Yes which um, wasn't a grand entrance. You basically just stepped into a hallway, um, whereas other ships, you come right into the atrium, you get this big overwhelming experience. The music playing, welcome. People yeah. welcoming you, and it felt extremely underwhelming getting on the ship. Now, I don't know if other people were directed to different doors, if they had a different experience, but that was just our experience was probably the most underwhelming experience the moment you stepped on the ship. However, it was efficient though, because they sent you right to your muster station. And I think the idea was go get it done so we can start the party. So mm -hmm. I think yeah. in that way, it 
it was well intended. Um, there was one other thing here. Let's see. Um, no. Oh, yes. I can't believe you missed this one oh. unless you put it somewhere else. Um, I was going to just talk about the location of the gym. Oh, because I do have that in a different category. Do you? Yeah. Okay, sorry to like mess things up here for you, but because it is kind of layout. Here. Okay. So I like the layout in that it has an amazing view from the gym. Mm -hmm. The gym was nice. It's beautiful. Okay, absolutely beautiful. However, I don't like that you need to walk through the spa area to get to the gym. So yes. I, because. I'm not going to this, I haven't really taken advantage of the spa on a cruise ship. And I, for some reason, I, I don't feel comfortable walking down there. I don't know what, what it is. I think you feel like you should be paying to go in the gym when it's complimentary and you're kind of walking past the, is it the, no. Um, kind of a customer service. The customer guess. service area for the spa. Yeah. And it feels like you should be checking in to or go to the gym. Or booking a service or do something. Yeah. So even it, though you don't need to It just all. feels like an odd location um, and there isn't a lot of, I mean, of course you can ask, but it just mm -hmm. doesn't, it seems like you shouldn't be there unless you're paying for the spa service. Even though, Even though we know is. that's not true. Yeah. We know that. And the other thing I just had to say is the gym hours I felt were limited. They ran from seven in the morning until eight 30 at night. Now that was our sailing. So that can obviously change. But I know the people in my life who love to work out, some of them like to work out either super early or late into the evening. Yeah, yeah. So that surprised me because even like on a basic land hotel, many of the gyms are open 24 hours. So yeah. uh, that to me was kind of, a, you know, it would okay. be a wish that they could improve on. Yeah. Um, I think, is that everything on your list? Yeah, that's all I have got to say on yeah, that. Yeah, that's all on my list. So. Again, we had an amazing time on the Carnival Panorama. It's a beautiful ship, and I always feel bad giving my wishes. But um, yeah, those are our likes and wishes on the ship and the layout on the Carnival Panorama. So let's share our thoughts with you on our cabin on the Carnival Panorama. We were in room 10232 on the Lido deck. It was a balcony cabin towards the front of the ship. So Andrea, what were some of your thoughts on the cabin? So first of all, I loved being on the Lido deck. This is our first time that we've ever stayed on the Lido deck mm -hmm. and it was super convenient. We were close to everything. We were close to the pools. Mm -hmm. We were close to the buffet and burgers and spent very, very little time in the elevators. Yes. Everything felt just like close by. I really, I loved the location. Yeah, the location was great. So we were um, between the elevators and the front of the ship and we couldn't hear any music or anything going on um, from the pool area so it was really nice that way when you were by the rooms near the elevators in the hallway you could still hear music playing especially during the parties but down where we were there was no music that you could hear in the hallway no, so it was, it was really a quiet cabin and we were really happy with it for sure so um, other thoughts well I, I loved being there and having the balcony it was a really nice spot to sit mm -hmm. uh, it was all glass and it had nice um nice but it was steel sides between uh the other cabin and us so you couldn't really see the other people on yeah. the other side unless you were like to look yeah. around uh, so it felt private if you're sitting there and just reading a book or whatever it was very nice mm -hmm. so i have some of the same comments i have um easy access which was awesome and again i love being on the lido deck uh, really good views because you are up higher. Um, you could see the views quite well from mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. um, when the we had lots of dolphins and a whale or two the one day. Um, great views of that from where we were at. It wasn't obstructed in any way. And the other thing is um, inside the cabin, it seemed quite spacious as well. It did, yeah. So, and the bed was comfy. The bed was really comfy. I actually have that on my list, and it was really nifty. So we had our son with us. And the couch actually folded out to make the third bed. So, so what kind of actually happens is that the back cushions on the couch come off. Mm -hmm. And so then that uh, gets made up as a bed. Yeah, no, for sure. Which for is, sure. and he was comfortable. He's six foot five and he had no problem. Mm -hmm. And like I said, like you said, I should say is the bed was comfortable. 
Um, we've been on another ship before, I won't say which name, where we didn't love the comfort, how comfortable mm. the yes, bed was. Yeah. Um, but the bed was extremely comfortable, yeah. I found. Um, and I did like, there was a couple other things. I really liked that there was light switches by the bed. Yes. Um, that you could turn off the main lights. And I'd already mentioned it seemed bigger and more open. Um, lots of storage in there mm -hmm. as well. So um, little sliders to put your stuff in, little cubbies, different things like that. This is not important maybe because you're on a holiday. <laughs> Don't go on a vacation to watch TV. But there was a lot to watch on TV. Yeah, I have that on here too. Yeah, um, lo lots okay. of free movies, a yeah. nice large TV. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, when I say large, like large for a cruise ship, kind of probably a mid-sized home Last TV. Room, yeah. yeah. So, um, but a nice TV, we'd watch movies in the evening and yeah. a fair amount of complimentary movies on there as well. There were some paid options as well, but for mm -hmm. complimentary, there's a lot on there. I want to ask you about the temperature because I have this under a like. Did you, was it able to keep the temperature that you wanted in Mexico? Oh, yeah, I was comfortable the whole time. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We weren't um, too hot. It kept the temperature really well. Yeah. Um, so we've had in other ships where it wasn't able to hold the temperature very well. And this was able to this was good. keep that. Yeah. It was so. really good. The other thing I really liked about the room, and we do have a full ship tour. Um, you can check that out on, or not ship tour, a um, cabin tour. You can check that out on the channel. Um, the curtains were like blackout. Mm -hmm. It kept it really nice and dark in there. Um, and yeah, that was, it was just a really nice, um, again, that beach vibe kind of feeling in there. It was a lovely room. Yeah. Um, any other likes or did you have a few wishes? I really liked the cabin. Like I really liked it. It was very, uh, standard what you expect though on a cruise cabin. Yeah. Uh, so I do have some wishes though. Well, I would say that too. Yeah. I was very comfortable, but there was a couple things that like it didn't blow you away. It yeah. was just a standard what you kind of would expect, but it was nice. It was very nice. Yeah. So any, so what are your wishes then? My wishes, there was no like plug in right next to the bed. Oh, I have that too. No USB or regular plug. And you know, shouldn't be addicted to our phone, but they do have the app and you do want to lay in bed and look at scroll and see yeah. what activities are happening. So I do think it's nice to, when there's a USB plug next to the bed. Well, right? and I use my phone for my alarm and I checking, um, the time. checking the time. So then you're getting up and plugging it in before you go to bed um, where it would be nice. <laughs> and it's all okay. I don't it's know all okay. But, about this, but this is like, this is a wish that we I, have. I think in this day and age, especially this not being that old of a ship, I was shocked that there wasn't USB plugs or a regular plug beside the bed. Yeah. I actually prefer a regular plug. Yeah. Uh, either is fine with me. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is a couple of things. Um, the, I'm going to say this on every ship that does this, the shower curtains. I don't yeah, like shower curtains. I like glass better. I will say that for every time we go on a ship, I don't like shower curtains. I think it's dumb. Um, you went with glass on the Mardi Gras. You should have gone with glass on the Panorama. Um, and <laughs> I wish there was more hooks. This is so dumb, but like um, more hooks in the cabin. There's a couple of them, but I find I am starting to, I use like more and more, more hooks for hats or different things. And I wish there was just, and if some some cruise ships do have more hooks and where I'm starting to find this um, helpful is, you know, if you bring a hat to hang up your hat, uh, to hang up your you know, lanyard or anything, it just helps you keep things organized. Mm -hmm. So it's nice if you can, you know, keep your stuff sorted that way. Yeah. So that's all I have on the Really? I have a couple more. Panorama. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, <laughs> I would say at the vanity area of the little desk, there wasn't a lot of storage space. So you right, you're right next to the wardrobe that has a lot, like mm -hmm. your basic. But I've been on other ships that have more drawers around the vanity. So it's easier to store, you know, your makeup or your sunscreen or your medications, whatever, right there next it, around the vanity yeah. to get ready. Now there is a drawer, but it's basically full because of the hair dryer. So it only holds the hair dryer. That's an interesting thing. Uh, am I wrong to say that some ships have the hair dryer in the um, washroom or are they all? They're uh... usually in the vanity. Okay. I don't yeah. use it, so no, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, yeah. no, no. They're usually, I, most of the time I've seen them, um, they're around the vanity. Um, but there, I've been on other ships that have uh, 
more like a desk that have drawers all the way down on each side. Mm -hmm. And I've usually taken over that as my space. So I felt like that was a little lacking. Yeah. Um, it was kind of typical, but it was, I've seen better. I like a, just a little more space there for my personal items. That's such a small thing though. Um, the other thing is this is common when you stay on a balcony and I just want to like make note of it is that we could hear our neighbors when they were on their balcony. Yes. And we could hear them actually when they were in their um, cabin talking as well with friends. However, it wasn't an issue for us because they were quiet after midnight. Um, they weren't a loud group. No. It was just... You could tell like... they had friends coming and going, especially mm -hmm. when the, um, the door to the balcony would slam. If you don't catch it, it's really loud. And it's yeah. easy to let it slip. So... Yeah. Um, so it is a door and not a slider. A slider. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think I think I found um, our last day in an inside cabin was quieter than being on the balcony. I think we heard more noise coming from outside yeah. in from the balcony. And you know what? We didn't hear anything on the one side. It was just a little bit of noise from the other side. It wasn't a problem. But if you're a light sleeper and you want to go to bed at 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. you might be upset. And so I'd say bring earplugs. Yeah. So... Okay, cool. Any other thoughts? No, that wraps it up. The cabin was lovely. I really liked it. Yes, I did too. So it was a great option on the panorama. Let's talk about the food and the restaurants on the Carnival Panorama. Mm -hmm. Ken, what do you have to say? I have a fair bit to say about this. Um, let's start out with the Vista restaurant. So um, we only did complimentary dining on this cruise. The Vista restaurant is the main dining room on the ship that we ate at. And it was really nice. I, we were able to sit by the window all week. Um, that, of course, is because um, we, we ate a little earlier and... Mm -hmm. um, we did your time dining. Yes. So that's when you can select what time you want to eat at every mm -hmm. night. Yeah. And, well, actually on the first night they said if you're able to come early, come talk to them at the front and you could get the same table all week. And we did that. We ate around... Was it 5.30? I think every week or every day. <laughs> and we got the same table by the window every night. which same was staff. Same staff. It was really nice. Um, so the, the restaurant was beautiful. And the food, I was really impressed with the food in the Vista and even the service. And I think we'll talk about the service later. But um, some of the food we had was awesome. I loved the cranberry bread. That was good. That was really good. We had steak. We had lobster, um, prime rib, all sorts of salads. Um, some of the other ones, creme brulee, escargot, pork sliders, that might have been my favorite thing um, on the whole week. It was so good. And then lamb as well. There is, I mean, so much more. You could be here all day just talking about the food in the Vista restaurant. But the food there for being complimentary food was awesome. It, it was really good. And there's a lot of fun options and variety. Mm -hmm. They like to put... Um, some unique things on the menu that you can try and they're not things that I would typically order or buy but that's one of the joys of being on a cruise it's a really low risk to mm -hmm. try something you may not try it at home because truthfully if you hated it you could ask them to bring you something else no for sure and just so many great options they had their you know different things that change every day and then the staples that were there on a daily basis so I really really did enjoy the Vista restaurant and not only at dinner but on the sea days we would go there for the sea day brunch yes which was awesome so um, I don't remember the times of it but um, in the morning to late morning um, you could go there for sea day brunch again it was complimentary and they had um, free complimentary juices in there the yogurt parfait. I know that's, oh, that's your favorite. favorite. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Coffee, of course. They had bacon every day at the Sea Day brunch that they had the Sea Day brunch, um, which is, oh, I'll get to that probably in my wishes here. Um, they have omelets, custom made omelets, French toast, etc. in there. I have to say, if you want a relaxed morning to sit and have your breakfast, mm -hmm. go to the main dining room. It's a really lovely place to sit down and enjoy your food. And we didn't find that it took too terribly long too. It wasn't drawn out. You don't need hours to go there. Yeah. Um, you need more than half an hour though. But yeah. um, you know, if you don't mind spending an hour to sit down and then bring the food, they keep topping up your orange juice and coffee. 
it's quite a relaxing way to start your morning off. Yeah, no, for sure. I always, um, we didn't used to do the sea day brunch, but we commonly will do that now. Um, and go there for, for breakfast. There so. is breakfast in the main dining room, though, on days that are not sea days. It's just the hours and the food options change. Yeah, no, for sure. So, um, I don't know. I really like it I, I, in the Vista restaurant. You know, it's not something we used to do, as you said, but we've changed. And yeah. our, maybe our style has changed. Everyone's a little different, but mm -hmm. we're really liking that. So, we tend to only do the buffet for breakfast most of the uh, we'll do it other times but on sea days when we're just needing a quick or sorry um port days when we're just needing a quick uh breakfast to go, to, to go. quickly yeah. yeah 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 so what's next on your likes next on my likes let's see um i actually talked about the app here um i thought it was really easy to make a reservation for the dining if you are doing the your time dining and it's mm -hmm. easy to check out the menu. They release it that day, so you can get up in the morning and you can check and see what they have on the menu in the main dining room. Yes. Which is kind of cool and fun. You don't, Ken doesn't like to know, well, he it's likes a surprise. I have it as actually one of my wishes later, so we'll... Oh, see, I like it because I can be like, looking forward to that meal all day. So we differ on this. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, other food, I love the blue iguana tacos and nice, burritos. Yeah. They have beef taco or beef burritos, chicken burritos, shrimp burritos, um, and that's complimentary by the main pool on yeah, the Lido deck. Pool. Beach pool. The first time though, I didn't realize there's two separate lines. One's for I believe tacos and one's for burritos. So yeah, make sure you're in the right line. <laughs> you're in the right line for tacos or burritos. Um, mm. So yeah, so many different options that way. Um, Guys, Pig and Anchor, and Smokehouse. Mm -hmm. Complimentary lunch. They call, lunch. They call on, it the barbecue. Pig and Anchor barbecue. Okay. Lunch. Yes, on deck five. And it's outside. And it's I believe. It's, but you can sit inside. Yes, but I believe this is only offered on embarkation day and sea days. Mm -hmm. So it is not open on port days. Yes. So if you're wanting to try out that kind of a barbecue, they've got pork butt, macaroni mm -hmm. and cheese, chicken, all sorts of good stuff. you just like saying pork butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the pork butt's good. And so that's always a fun one. Um, but it is down on deck five. So, yes. um, whereas the, the marketplace, which is the buffet is on deck 10, the Lido deck. Mm -hmm. And that's where you'll also find a uh, guy's burger. Yes. Which is uh, complimentary. You said the uh, blue iguana is on, yeah, the same area. And the sandwich shop. Oh, that is inside the marketplace in, in the buffet. 10, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of in the middle of the buffet. There's a sandwich shop area where they'll make custom sandwiches for you. Our son lived there. Yeah. Um, he loved that. Now we're just touching basically on the complimentary options. There are a lot of other food options along the or in the ship. Mm -hmm. um, these are the ones, of course, they even count swirls, the ice cream shop is a different place and we did have ice cream. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can always, well, that kind of leads to actually one of my other likes. The okay. gelato in the Lido Marketplace Buffet was really good. Yeah, and it's complimentary. It's complimentary so, and there's lots of toppings. Yeah, I think I had more toppings than ice cream, so. <laughs> <laughs> lots of toppings, the gelato. Um, I'm not sure what the flavors are every week if they change. I think we had raspberry or something like that. And I don't remember, but I it was know. good. Yeah. Um, Guys Burgers, I know you mentioned that. Really good. I love yeah. the burgers on there. Um, they kind of remind me of like Red Robin or something like that. The burgers. Yeah, yeah. But Red Robin's one of my favorite burgers. So <laughs> you might be like, Red Robin and Rolling Your Eyes. Um, they're, they're really good. You get fries, everything like that. Yeah. Any other thoughts on the food? Yeah, but I'm wondering, I think we're going to have some differing opinions here. So, um, well, I might have to like, I think I know what you're going to say, but I'm just going to, before we go into what I know is a wish for you, I'm going to okay. just talk about one of my wishes that's small. Okay. It's on Guy's Burger. Here's my problem, people. I start out with this gorgeous, beautiful sea day brunch, and then I'm looking forward, forward to this lovely dinner in the main dining room and it just doesn't leave a lot of room for burgers for me but yet I really want to try a burger so my wish is that 
and maybe they have this and I just don't know. So please tell me if they do have this. I wish there was a smaller version of the burger, like with all the fixings and the toppings, just a smaller patty like, and bun, like more like, like a, a, sli child's... a slider or a child size. Yeah, I yeah. love a slider because I, I just want to enjoy a little bit of it, but I, I just, I, I personally can't eat that much but i really just want to sample everything so i wish there was smaller burger versions of the like but with all the goodness just smaller yeah i would agree because it, um it's a lot of food and it still pains me to order a burger knowing that i'm gonna toss half of it in the garbage so and i think we'd share other than the fact that we're probably ordering the most opposite things yeah when it comes to yeah. a burger so. we get along but we don't always like the same food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I would agree right there. Um, I do have a few wishes. I know you do. Um, they're not big, but I, I, yeah. I do want to say them. Um, the Lido Marketplace Buffet, the actual buffet itself, so taking away the sandwich shop and the restaurants around it, the actual buffet seemed very limited and not a ton of options. Um, so for example, and I know I said this, the same thing on the Mardi Gras is they, for breakfast, they don't have bacon every day. Maybe like half the days they'd have bacon or, and then it would switch over to mm -hmm. like ham. And I'm just surprised because that used to be a staple on all cruise lines that you'd be able to get bacon everywhere. Not that I need a lot of bacon, but it is nice to go with your eggs, a couple of slices of the bacon. Um, so that would be one of my wishes. I, there's lots of options there, but it just seems limited to um, compared to other ships we've been on. Yeah, and I want to touch on this too. One thing I did notice is that uh, if you weren't there during the peak times, they closed down the buffet uh, table. Not the tables per se, but the um, where they served the food from was closed off. The first section closest to um, the beach pool, the center mm -hmm. of the ship. So you had to head towards the aft, the very back, and the second part of the buffet, and that's where you'd find the food. So you really had to go to the far end of the ship in the evening. Yeah. Um, now, their buffet, I would say when you look at just the buffet size, is surprisingly small and limited. However, Carnival has a totally different style. They've yeah. rather than having everybody in the buffet, I feel like they've tried to disperse the crowd, which is a good thing if your group can all agree on the same food. <laughs> now, I believe that the Panorama did a better job at this though than the Mardi Gras because the Mardi Gras had the burgers on a totally different floor. And even though Guy's Burger is not inside the buffet mm -hmm. it's just outside by the pool yeah around the corner so it's very close now i just made some notes here that i just want to like help explain this so if you're at if you're taking advantage of the sea day or embarkation day complimentary food items on deck five you'll find the pig and anchor barbecue mm -hmm. now most of the food is on deck 10 that's where you're going to find the guy's burger joint the blue iguana cantina and the Lido Marketplace, yeah. so the um, the buffet. Now then up a floor on deck 11, there's a pasta bar inside of Cachina del Capitano, and there's also a Mongolian walk inside of Gigi's. So as you can see, there's food up and down from the Lido deck. So yeah, no, for sure. In So in other ships, you might be able to get your Asian food in the buffet, so if somebody wants Asian food and somebody wants hamburgers, you're not in the same yeah. space. So, and you don't have, for me, it's actually probably better because I tend to take too many different options. Somehow I've like traveled the world on my plate and it doesn't always go together. So maybe it's well, nice just to have I Italian didn't, or. I didn't even know that. Um, so inside Gigi's for lunch, I think on the sea days, there's the Mongolian walk, yes. um, which is complimentary. Um, during sea days during lunch and there's also pasta bella inside C Cucina del Capitano yeah. where you can get pasta at lunch. I didn't even realize that those were available until you'd mentioned it on the last day. And it's, they're not spaces that you walk past so you don't actually even see that they're there. Mm -hmm. So unless you're like 
check your fun times, look, see what options are available, ask questions because uh, even though the Lido market, is it marketplace market, is not huge, there's an abundance of food options. Yeah, no, for sure. And um, the pig and anchor being down on deck five, this is, it's a wish just because it's out of the way and you forget about it as well. Yes. So um, you see people in the elevator trying to meet up with their family. One person's coming up from deck five with their, their pig and anchor or their barbecue mm -hmm. up to the buffet because they're meeting up with people. And it's just not that centralized. Those three restaurants, though, are not complimentary for dinner. So they are yeah. specialty restaurants. So that is, I believe, why they're not mm -hmm. on deck 10 with the other restaurants. They are people destination points. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, my... Last wish, and I think I'm going to make one comment mm -hmm. on top of that. My last wish mm -hmm. is about the app and at dinner. Mm -hmm. um, it's an assumption that you would have your phone mm -hmm. with you at dinner in the Vista yeah. restaurant to look at the menu. Yeah. If you ask, they will bring you a paper menu. Mm -hmm. I don't like that that's assuming that you're going to bring your phone to dinner. You, you like the traditional. I like the traditional. Um, we've been on different ship recently where it, they still gave you the, the menu right automatically. away automatically. And I, I really don't like that. I, I like looking at a paper menu rather than scrolling through my phone. Um, I mean, I, I'm technology savvy. I do that all the time. I just prefer it that way. You know what? I, interestingly enough though, I've grown to like the app more and more mm -hmm. and become more comfortable. At first I found it tricky because you're like, okay, I wanted this from the app and then you got to scroll to another screen and this, and then scroll and this. So whereas you're trying to find where was that again, you scroll past it. I don't know, I feel like I... It's the same thing though. We'll still go ask for the daily agenda on paper. And something. Oh, uh, the fun times. There's something satisfying about like highlighting or circling. I wanna do this, this, I, I don't mm -hmm. know. For me, a little old school, but I like that. Mm -hmm. I had another wish. Okay. So in the evening, um, after the, the, Man. Buffet shuts down. The deli is open longer. And then there's the pizza. We forgot to talk about the pizza. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. there's pizza all the time. Or I shouldn't say all the time, but it goes quite late. Now, personally, I like to have a snack before I go to bed, but I don't like something heavy. Okay. I don't actually want a meal at night. At home, I might have a bowl of Cheerios or a yogurt or a banana. Um, mm -hmm. Something just small and light. Um and there's not um, anything out that you can just pick up. Yeah, Of that's course, not... there's room service that you could order. Yeah. But in terms of a complimentary food item that's available, mm -hmm. um, you are kind of limited to the pizza or to the deli um, into the late evening. So what I actually did to work around this is I actually just picked up a yogurt and I took it to at breakfast. At breakfast. Yeah, or like a banana or something. And I just left it in the cabin knowing. And there's, of course, the mini fridge. So, mm -hmm. um, and so I had that available if I wanted a, a little snack because you won't find like just like a little muffin or a little yogurt, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's not out. The other thing I did want to mention, and this isn't a wish, it's more of a observation. And okay. I know you mentioned this yeah. in our vlogs is in Pastabella or Cachina del Capitano. It's right under the basketball court. Yeah. And when we were there for lunch, you could hear the thumping the whole yeah, time yeah. from the basketballs. Yeah. And I know you'd mentioned in our blogs, you wonder if that's why the basketball court closes early. Um, so it's not bothering people when they're so. paying yeah. Yeah. in Cachina del Capitano in the evening. So, yeah. um, so on this ship, you do pay for Cachina del Capitano in the evenings. When we were on the Mardi Gras, and I don't know if it's that way, it was complimentary during right. our sailing. Yes. So yeah. um, It does differ from ship to ship, so you will want to... Uh, double check. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> um, any other thoughts on the food and dining? You know what? I really like the your, t your time dining, even though we selected the option when it was given to us to... Um, mm -hmm keep the same spot every night. I think that's a great option for people to adjust depending on port day or not port day. Yeah, I, I, the food was wonderful. Yeah, no, it was um, really good and we were extremely happy with it. So let's discuss the activities and amenities on the Carnival Panorama. Andrea, take it away. <laughs> Me to start first, okay. Yes. Well, I have to say the ship size of the Carnival Panorama 
gives you a lot of fun activities that you can do that are not on every ship. Yes. For instance, I really enjoyed the ropes course. It was a lot of fun for me, a grown adult, to behave like a child and mm -hmm. to climb through an obstacle. I thought it was fun and um, it made me feel a little young again. Yes, I enjoy that too. I have actually have that on my list. It is complimentary and it is fun. It's challenging. It can be family friendly. Family friendly. Um, they let us do two laps. We did it on, I believe, the first sea day, and we waited about half an hour, kind of in the busy. midday, to to do that. So um, really enjoyable and just going around and seeing great views. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the staff are super friendly. So mm -hmm. if you're nervous about it, go ahead and try. If you get out there and realize it's not your thing, they will help you get down. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, the sky rope or sky ropes, <laughs> uh, sky ride, I'll let you talk about that. But the ropes course, yeah, fun, complimentary, and it was really good. So now I did the sky ride with our son, Thomas. And we had a lot of fun racing each other up mm -hmm. there. And I feel like the camera doesn't really capture how fast you're going or when you can feel yourself accelerating. The track is not level. So there are these parts that dip down. And you, when you're racing against someone, you're they don't dip at the same time. So it's like you each, each get your little boost. Yeah. And, and the it, tracks cross one another they about do. halfway. Yeah. So it was... It was fun. I really enjoyed it. It didn't take too long to do. It was just a couple minutes, but yeah. uh, really, really fun thing to try. And that's complimentary as well. And the line, I think, was a little longer for it that. Was. It's, it was. It was on the sea day. I think it was closer to an hour most days for, for the wait for that. So, um, yeah. So that was the sky ride and the ropes course. Those are awesome amenities on the ship. Um, there's also a really cool area kind of right below that. There's the mini golf area that has mm -hmm. um it's kind of on two floors the mini golf mm -hmm. and there's also the cornhole kind of inside there the cornhole game as well as pool tables yes so those were kind of a fun little area busy, on the ship. busy little area really busy especially on the sea days i'm not sure we've tried playing pool on sea days before it definitely doesn't <laughs> the balls all roll to one end but um it, it's kind of funny. okay that's just we'll leave it at that that's why i blame my pool schools or not Pool schools, pool, pool skills. skills aren't that great. I blame it on the ship, but yeah. really, it wouldn't matter either way. So. Yeah. <laughs> so really fun area to hang out. Yeah. Um, do you want to? Do you have more? I have, yeah, yeah. I have a few more. Uh, in my opinion, Carnival does the best sail away parties. Yes, I would hundred percent agree. And they really get everybody involved. Um, there's just a lot of like happiness that you feel watching mm -hmm. uh, if you like so many people are dancing and even if you choose not to and you watch just a lot of fun you feel the energy of everybody they're excited and outgoing um they really know how to get everybody involved in their parties in general but especially the sail away party i would agree and i i have sail away party on here as well and again they do that around the beach pool on deck 10 in and the as i um, we've talked about before is that it's three tiers there. So there's lots of areas for you to stand around. If you don't want to be down on the main um, Lido deck dancing, you can watch from above. Everybody's kind of doing their YMCA thing and lots just having of fun, fun music. Yeah. Um, the most, most of the music, everybody knows. They're not picking obscure music that only a few people know. It's the, the stuff that everybody knows and everybody gets into it. The cruise director, we had Marty, the cruise director on there. He was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, he's leading it and the fun squads out there. Just, it was, it was a great time. Really um, was, yeah. With all of that. I do want to mention um, back for amenity, activities and amenities. And I know we mentioned this already. Mm -hmm. The gym is really nice. Um, once you get past the, uh, the entrance there and you know that you're in the gym. Um, great views. It kind of wraps around the front of the ship. Mm -hmm. Lots of treadmills, lots of bikes. There's some weightlifting equipment in there and mm -hmm. um, ellipticals, all that kind of stuff. And I do have a tour of the gym as well if you want to look that up on the channel. Um, so a quick walkthrough if you're looking for that. And I know you mentioned this before, the walking track. Mm -hmm. um, a great little venue up there that, again, there isn't chairs around it. So... Um, you don't have joggers mixed with um, people trying to sunbathe and 
um, walkers and people yeah. eating burgers all in the same spot. It's just a running track, which is really handy, or a walking track. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes around the sports court. So a really nice sports court. Um, a lot of people playing basketball out there, and they'll Some do fun and games. Those uh, yeah, I, fun, I have yeah. that as well. So the um, outdoor Sky Fitness Center. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're the kind of equipment that uses your body weight as resistance. So kind of when like... When you pull down, it lifts you up. So yeah. Like, yeah. So a, a fun outdoor um, kind of yeah. exercise area. So um, yeah, other, other likes? Um, you may not have put this in this area, but I put hot tubs that... They're hot tubs. Some of them stay open until midnight. That's actually my next one on the list. Is it? Yeah. yeah. And that's later than some of the other cruise lines we've been on. There's This is like a... We like to use the hot tubs at night. And some companies will shut them down fairly early. So we appreciate the later the better. So uh, this is a like and a wish. I'll come back to the wish yeah. later. But um, the Tides Pools hot tubs were open till midnight at the yes, back of the ship yes. on deck 10. Yeah. Um, the other ones did close and earlier. And that could change from itinerary and could be adjusted. So mm -hmm. check check the fun times, it'll tell you. Yeah, no, for sure. And then this, I don't know if you have this one. I really, we checked out the library bar. Yes. It's not a bar, but it's like the library, they call mm -hmm. it the library bar. And if you're into reading, there was actually quite a few books in there. Um, you could check out games and then you don't even check them out. You just take them and um, bring them back when you're done with them. So. Uh, or you can play them in there. It was quite there was quiet. There space for that. Yeah. yeah. So a fun little area there mm -hmm. on the ship. Um, I only went down the water slides once on the ship. But there was a really large water slide area on the ship. Mm -hmm. As well as um, the water works area. So like the kids water play area. And there were adults doing water slides too. Not just us. It was yeah. nice. When it's really hot, I think everybody was looking for some water. Yeah. No, it's, it's a, it was fun. a really big water area mm -hmm. on the ship. And um, especially the kids have a lot of fun yeah, in that sure. area. So colorful, yellows, reds, um, blues, just a fun, fun place it's to nice hang out. Place. Yeah. Um, under like activities, they did have quite a few different sales throughout the week. So the $10 sales, the shirt sales. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we already mentioned this, but handbags, purses, wallets, scarves, um, t-shirts throughout the week. So those are fun activities they have. Um, and I think some of our stuff is going to fall under our next category, which is venues and shows as well. So, um, so, but I do have a couple of wishes. Do you have any other? Um, well, you know, it's kind of hard when you break down venues and shows <clears throat> and activities because they are kind of similar mm -hmm. because there were a lot of things that we just sat and watched. We didn't participate um, like there's so much, um, trivia yes, trivia. and I'm like, is that a activity? I'm not sure. But, um, and, uh, like bingo and all, like there's so many things to do. Like you'd be here all day if we listen them all off. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so uh, I think a lot of that for me, it was under kind of venues and shows. Okay, yeah. Um, so I'll just go into my wishes and then we'll sure, move on yeah. to that. So, um, one wish was the limited hours in the gym and the location. Yeah. I know we already talked yeah. about that. Um, and the other was, this comes back to the hot tub and we already talked about that, is the limited hours for the hot tubs that aren't in the, um, at the Tides Pool area. So the Serenity closed quite early. Yeah. Um, and the beach pool. And so the beach pool. Midship. Yeah. yeah so um, my, I guess my wish is that because they close it's more the serenity one that they close that early. It means that, and I haven't, we brought a teen along on our trip. Yeah. It just means that the hot tubs at the back of the ship get filled up with um, teens and to the point where it's like sardines in a can at some points. There's and just too many people, too many people that people. want to use a hot tub at night. It's and, full. and so it's not even, I'm not going to go climb between 20 teenagers and sit there or stand there I should say because you wouldn't be able to sit mm -hmm. um, and I just wish that they would keep the serenity hot tubs or at least one of them open till midnight as well um, for 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 that so I'm surprised you didn't bring this up because we were in the hot tub one evening and they came and closed the hot tub down 15 minutes early oh. and you were so sad well <laughs> yeah so it was like like a child being so, told to get off the video games early. That night we had time. gone to three hot tubs. So 
Like looking for a hot tub yeah. space? Yeah, so we'd gone to the Serenity, it had already closed, then we went to the um, beach pool area, and then we finally got into... You're looking for space. That one, we finally got a space at the Tides pool area, and we were only in there for a few minutes, and then they came and closed it down 15 to 20 minutes early before midnight. Um, so we were kind of disappointed in that. That could just be that. like a one-off thing, but I wish that if they say midnight, please keep it open till midnight. Yes, I 100% <laughs> agree. I'm glad, glad you brought that up because I'd forgotten oh, about that. You were so sad. I was sad. So midnight, if it's midnight, keep it till midnight. Don't shut it down 15, 20 minutes early because um, everybody in the hot tub was disappointed. <laughs> really disappointed. Yeah, so because um, we were all surprised. Um, yeah, so I think any other likes and wishes from, well, from just, that? I, I do, I do. One more okay. thing is I thought that the mini golf was super cute and fun. Okay. But because of the location with all the other activities with uh, the beanbag toss and the uh, ping pong and everything right there, um, it was actually hard to play the mini golf at times because mm -hmm. you're trying to putt and somebody's right behind you throwing a beanbag toss like you're kind of standing in their way to be able to yes. mini golf and there was a lot of confusion on the course the order the order so yeah. a lot of uh, people weren't aware or didn't know that um there actually was an order to follow and so uh what was fine we just had a fun non-competitive game but if you're trying to have a serious competitive game on board the carnival panorama bring your patience because people may mm -hmm. cut in front of you or, you know, whatever, but, but. I would say the course was a ton of fun. It was a really good course because we were on a different ship and it said mini golf and then it was just a putting green. Yeah. So, and that was super disappointing. Whereas this had like all the things you can putt through. I and, think where they started, the number one should have been by where you got the putter from though. That's true. That's so That was that the was, problem is that the number one hole was not near where you got your ball and putter from. So there was some confusion. So, yeah. so people were starting on okay. whatever hole that was, three or four. That was a small problem, yes. a small wish. So <laughs> overall, I loved the course, it was great. <laughs> All right, well, that was our activities and amenities on the Panorama. Ken, let's talk about the venues and shows on the Carnival Panorama. Can you tell me what some of your wishes and likes were? Ooh, interesting. Um, well, definitely, I have actually quite a few likes on this, um, not a lot of wishes. So first off, I know we had already talked about this, but I really enjoyed the sail away party, the parties on the ship. Um, Carnival takes them to another level. They're definitely a lot of fun mm -hmm. um, throughout the week. They, I don't recall the name, but the silent disco where you wear the, mm -hmm. the headphones and it's quiet. Um, they've got the... Um, mega deck party and different things. The groove for St. Jude is out there. So if you're not sure what that is, um, they're raising money for the St. Jude's, I believe it's the mm -hmm. Children's Hospital. Yeah. You can buy a t-shirt for $10 um, and they're raising lots of money for that. So a little party like that. Um, so all the different parties throughout the week, they do a really good, good job with that. Um, they've got the big screen out there playing movies. Lots of movies. Lots of movies. So that's a really nice venue, um, that big screen out there overlooking the beach pool. So mm -hmm. that's that's awesome. Um, our son really enjoyed that for sure. It's a fun thing to do in the evening too. If you're not ready to call it a night, just to sit down and relax and catch a bit of a movie. Yeah, he'd grab a sandwich and go sit out there. <laughs> <laughs> he would, he would. He loved it. Yeah. So um, as for other things here, um, the Limelight Lounge, which is where the comedy was, um, fun little venue. Yeah. So the punchline or comedy was in there. Um, lots of comedy. Lots of comedy. Lots of different shows going on. And I'll throw in a little bit of a wish here. It's a little on the small side. It gets, every comedy is mm -hmm. packed. Mm -hmm. It could be a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. um, we went about, so a tip for you. We went about half an hour early to make sure we got seats yeah. for the comedy. So um, don't expect to get a very good seat or a seat at all if you're showing up five minutes before it starts. And I don't want to be picked on in a comedy show, so <laughs> I choose intentionally to sit towards the back. 
and the front seats are usually available. So if you come in towards the end, you're kind of sitting in the hot spot. <laughs> yeah, the hot spot of the comedian picking on you. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so that's the Limelight Lounge. Um, lots of good comedy. We've seen lots of comedy shows on Carnival now, and mm-hmm. um, it's been a lot of fun. It has so, been, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so every week, though, our comedians are likely not the same comedians mm-hmm. that, you, that you would see on your ship. Um, the Liquid Lounge, so that's the main theater on the ship, and I am glad I said that right because that still bugs me that it's called the Liquid Lounge and not theater. Um, but in there, we saw lots of shows. Broadway Beats and Celestial Strings were actually shows that we'd seen on the Mardi Gras. So um, if you're not aware of this, um, different ships throughout the fleet will have the same shows mm-hmm. um, on them. So. Those we actually saw on the Mardi Gras, and I was happy to see them again. So they were good. really good. Um, so especially Celestial Strings because um, we kind of mostly missed it. Mostly missed it and saw it from a bad angle on the Mardi Gras because it wasn't in the main theater. Whereas here they did it in the Liquid Lounge, which is the main theater. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like different shows like Rock Revolution, all these shows were were really good and. Mm-hmm. I highly recommend, especially if you haven't sailed Carnival before and seen their shows, to make sure you check them out. They are complimentary on the ship. There's like lots of lighting and there's a confetti coming down at one point. Yeah. Um, like the vi- there's um, in Celestial Strings, there's people who play the violins in there. They're extremely good. Um, you might see them throughout the week in the atrium area playing, um, but there was three of them mm-hmm. playing violins in that show acrobatics, all that kind of stuff. So There's a, a lot to see. It's really mm-hmm. well done. The music, the singing. We enjoyed going to the shows. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, any other um, likes about the venues um, and shows? No, you kind of like hit like all the things that I really enjoyed. Yeah, no. So they do a really good job with that. I do have a couple of wishes, and I already mentioned the one um for the limelight lounge it just seems a little small um for the comedy because it's always packed out um the other wish was the main theater it holds a lot of people but it seems a little smaller than other ships as well both ken and i really enjoy the classic theater yes. layout like the old school and this just didn't feel quite the same mm-hmm. because a lot of the seating is um, removable chairs, just regular chairs put down on the floor. Um, I mean, they're nice and they're padded and whatever, but you don't have the same uh, vantage of a, a sloped theater where yeah. you're like, you can see over the person in front of you. Um, so uh, that would be a wish that they would stay with a traditional theater. Yeah. I understand that they're reusing the theater at night then. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they can take out those chairs and have a dance floor and do different activities. So it's more versatile. But um, I like classic, classic, classic. I would agree. That's, uh, I didn't love the chairs on the floor and that it wasn't sloped because it was actually harder to see if you're Absolutely, down there. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I want to mention, this was actually a like I, that I mm-hmm. forgot, was some of the other shows that were in there. Um, Deal or No Deal was fun. Oh, they yeah, do they do bingo in there um, and different things like that. So those were also... And some of them are during the day. So yeah, during the check, day. Check oh, the, um, the other one was uh, the Wave Morning Show. They'll film yeah. that in there. You can go watch the cruise director. It was Marty at the time um, filming that. And they also did like a question and answer show with the staff as well. So that again, that was the cruise director, yeah. Marty, and a couple I of the other staff. I think it was staff. with the entertainment uh, director. Yeah, during our week, it was the entertainment yeah. staff. So um, the venues, shows, really good on there, and I really enjoyed them. Me too. Me too. All right, let's talk about our likes and wishes about the staff on the Carnival Panorama. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I don't actually have any wishes. I have one. You have one. Interesting. I have one. I know. Okay. I know. And you're going to be like, oh, yes. Okay. Right. But yeah, go ahead. All right. So I'll start then if that's the yeah, case. Yeah, you go ahead. I'm going to talk about Marty, the cruise director. I think he was, he was extremely energetic. One of the top, if not the best cruise directors we've ever had on a cruise. Mm-hmm. He was everywhere. I don't think the man slept. <laughs> he was in the 
um, in the lounges, he was in the theaters, he was in the, in the, I don't know, at the different stores. He was everywhere on the ship. He was doing the parties and he was, out of every cruise director we've had, he was the most willing to say hello to everybody. He felt like a host. Like when mm -hmm. you go to a party and someone's hosting the party who goes out of their way to welcome you, to say goodbye to you, to help you with any problems. Yeah. Um, nothing was like, like not his problem. If you had something, he was like willing to help you out. Yeah. He was Very saying goodbye helpful. when we got off the ship, shaking everyone's hands. He's available. He, he was available. We've gone on other cruises where I couldn't even almost tell you who the cruise director was. Um, we've gone on other carnival cruises who I, the cruise directors have done a very good job, but I didn't have the opportunity once to meet them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I met Marty 10 times on this cruise and he was just everywhere. And it wasn't that I was seeking him out. He was just everywhere on he the show. He was ship. seeking people out, like yeah. interacting with the crowd, walking yeah. through people. Greeting everybody before the comedy show or greeting everybody as they walked into the theater. Mm -hmm. um, top notch marty great job and mm, super absolutely. friendly super energetic he was doing all the shows the deal or no deal everything it was just awesome so really good. Well, done, um, marty. well done marty and props to you mm -hmm. um the wave morning show i have he did the comedy liquid lounge deal or no deal i just have those all written down that he was everywhere so yeah um well then we could even talk about the host of the comedy show alejandro he's the next on my list again the exact same thing and it makes me wonder if this is the goal of the staff on the Carnival Panorama, if they've set it as a goal to really interact and make people feel like they're part of the Carnival family. Mm -hmm. Because those, specifically those two, just really did that for this trip. And it took our trip, our experience, to a whole nother level. It made me want to book and come back because... Not just because I love going on a cruise and all the wonderful food and the beautiful like places that we go, but because the people made us feel good. Yes, I 100% agree. Alejandro, or just mentioning him, yeah. he was the host on our sailing for the um, Punchline or Comedy Club. And he also did, when we were doing the high ropes course, he was checking us in for that and helping us get our, our straps or um, oh, our harness, put, harness on. put on. Yeah. And he was everywhere on the ship. And again, the same thing, just greeting everybody, talking with people, very available to... And, and willing to talk to our son, too, and interact with the kids, too. Very friendly. Yeah. Just Even um, our son saw him in the buffet or whatever. It was just... Interacting. It, interacting. It and fun. Yeah. He, so, great job, um, Alejandro, as well. So, um, And just the fact that reaching out and meeting people, I think, made a huge difference. I do also want to um, give a shout out to our wait staff in the in the Vista restaurant. Mm -hmm. The um, Joy was our main waiter, and then we had Albert and Melanie, and mm -hmm. they were awesome as well. Um, excellent service, and like to the point where when we walked in, they'd already had our beverages on the table because they knew what we liked um, mm -hmm. sitting there on the table waiting for us before we even sat down. So um, they were very attentive and. Mm -hmm. Um, caring and I would say they were humorous as well they were teasing yeah. and like in a in a very polite way but mm -hmm. just um that, that sort of thing they had a really you know this staff like I said it's not just about the food when they they go that extra level mm -hmm. um it just really like warms your heart <laughs> yeah no for sure <laughs> for sure um any other thoughts on the staff let me just double check my notes before I surprise you with my wish. No, I'm ready for my wish. Uh oh. I know this is important to you. Okay. Oh, can, I have one that I just thought of. Maybe I it's know, the same. Probably. Can always. Okay, I do too. But you always enjoy getting to see the captain. That's exactly what I just yeah, thought of right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves getting to hear like the captain's perspective. And so. When we went to the one show where we got to hear them talk about, um, kind of end of the cruise, about the cruising experience, I really like when the captain is there because you get the different perspective. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I, I believe that they do some interactions with the captain when you're higher up. 
Okay. Um, with the status. I have no clue who yeah. the captain was on the ship. So, Whereas other ships we've been on, you yeah. see the captain all the time. Um, so I just wish that they would even introduce the captain more yeah. or that would be, and not even that you have to like meet and greet them, but maybe a little, show would be nice. a little bit of a show more, um, yeah. who the captain is and what they stand for. And even, yeah. We I just don't like know. to hear their stories and their experiences and their perspective. Yeah. So um, that's a good point. I, I would 100% agree. I knew. I knew. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, other than that, staff was awesome on the ship and highly recommended. So it was really good. So our last topic on the carnival panorama is embarkation and disembarkation. And we have one tip for you at the end as well. So make sure you stick around for that because I think it's a pretty good tip. Mm -hmm. I wish we'd known this tip. So it'll help you out. It'll help you out. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly help you out. For some people it'll help you out. So do you want to start out on this one? Yeah. Okay. So we selected the earliest embarkation time as possible. Yes. I believe ten. We, I believe we had ten o'clock. Yeah. Okay, so the night before I actually felt panicked because we both got phone calls that we missed. They were both from Carnival. Mm -hmm. And we had recorded messages saying that our embarkation time had been moved from 10 o'clock and until 11 o'clock as well as we got an email. So, but at yeah. first I was like panic. You have a voicemail from Carnival the night before. Yeah. Anyhow, it was all okay. But for us, we had to return our car rental, which meant we still had to be there at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Because that's what our travel arrangements were. We, well, we didn't want to pay for an extra day or whatever of car no, rental if it's no. late. No, and you're either gonna stand on the side of the road waiting for an Uber for an extra hour or you're just gonna get to the port. So we chose to go to the port. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say, I just wanna like, this is probably, mm, this is kind of a mix like and wishes. So the whole process for us went smoothly. Yeah. There was no hiccups, everything worked as it was supposed to. When we got in the line, we actually, still got in through the first like through security at 10 30. Mm -hmm. yeah um, when we got there we were still there for 10 the lines were already building up building up us. so clearly not everyone had gotten their message <laughs> no and part of the problem then too is people will say like had we waited till 11 it would have been potentially hours before we got on the ship because then the there was such a backlog of people waiting to go through security that they had to wait outside for a long time. Yeah. And they were not as happy as we were. So mm -hmm. we actually didn't get on the ship until noon. It was yeah. exactly noon when we walked into onto the ship. So it was still an hour even after that delayed. For us, it was okay. I wasn't stressed yeah. about it. Um, but we, you know, we were inside. We could sit down. We didn't have any small children with us. Like nothing yeah. complicated. So... It did take, but they did let us into the building at 1030 for our sailing. Correct, so, yeah. 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 So, um, the port itself though, a uh, really nice port, lots mm. of seating inside there or, um, inside the building. I don't know if you've been there. It's kind of like a dome. It's right next to the Queen Mary. So lots of seating in there, places to take pictures and different things. Restrooms available. Restrooms, restrooms available. restrooms outside as well. Outside and inside. Yes. The staff were very friendly. Um, so lots of seating, like I mentioned, and um when you get on the ship though it's um it was very smooth and i know we already talked about this about it wasn't the grand entrance onto the ship but it was very smooth and convenient going mm -hmm. to do the muster drill true yes so yeah um that the way that that happened was was very smooth um any thought i do have some disembarkation thoughts mm -hmm. that i want to get to in a moment but for getting on the ship any other thoughts other than our kind of tip um bring your patience because mm -hmm. you know lines can develop um i wouldn't go hungry just in case you're delayed <laughs> you know like you want to avoid being hangry while you're waiting but we all want to go and eat on the on the on the ship we do, so we do. most people i think go eat right away when they get on the ship so true but you know start meeting people start like yeah. chatting and just enjoy even if you have to sit down and wait mm -hmm. take a deep breath you know be prepared that 
you just because you're told that your embarkation time is a certain time, know that that could change so that you have a positive attitude. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for getting off the ship, you went to the disembarkation show and if you're looking for your luggage tags, this is the first place that they're going to start giving them out. That's true. So if you want first pick of a time um, for your checked luggage, this is where you want to be. So they'll put out a, like a little stand with all the different tags on it and you can choose um, if you want to be on one of the earlier to leave or the later. Now for us, because we had lots of time, we actually chose the last, the latest tag because we know other people, they need to get places and our flights aren't we're now going out till the evening so. so we're just gonna wait in the airport so we took the time just to sip a little more coffee and enjoy our morning until it was yeah. time to disembark but if you're looking for the early tags i highly recommend going to that show getting them right away they did put them out after the show on the lido deck and the early numbers go first so um, be there. Now, of course, if you're having to catch a flight and there's problems, I would go talk to customer, customer service, service and yeah. make sure you can get that all sorted out. I don't think they're going to make you miss your flight because you couldn't get the right number. I think they'll, they'll help you sort that out, but, um, definitely try and get your, your tags right away. Um, so go to that show and learn all about getting off. So it goes smoothly. And like you said, we, Went and sat in the buffet and sipped coffee and just waited for the last one. We figured it's better to sit in there than in the airport. So for sure, for sure, because yeah. uh, uh, it's nice to drink coffee. <laughs> um, and one other tip for that, I would highly recommend using the restrooms before everybody is waiting to get off the ship, because oh, the lineups right. for the restrooms were huge especially at the buffet uh, especially at the buffet area yeah. yeah um because you can't get all over the ship anymore there's limited number of restrooms so make sure you don't use it in your cabin before you leave and don't be like i'll use them at the buffet and we actually had breakfast first in the uh main dining room yes but we almost missed it so make sure you check your fun times because it ends quite early because of the disembarkation. Yeah. And so then once we were done there, we went and waited in the, in the buffet in the buffet area. So it was nice. There also is a express disembarkation option if you're going to take off your own luggage. So go to the go to the show and find out how that works. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, I think that's all I have for embarkation and disembarkation. Any thoughts? I, I guess one wish. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say on Princess. Um, our tags we filled out when we wanted to get off and the tag showed up automatically in the room. Um, that might be something nice for Carnival to implement as well. Took a lot of the stress off of it. Yeah, to choose. And I actually think it'd be nice if you could just select that um, when you check in. Online mm -hmm. is an option of when, because a lot of people know when their, yeah. their flights are or whatnot. So. Yeah, so you didn't have to rush off and try and grab tags. Um, they just showed up in your room for you. So. Um, yeah, maybe, I don't know if there's logistics issues with that, but maybe a good option to look at. Um, so that's all we have for that. We have one tip for embarkation and disembarkation. Absolutely. This is if you plan on taking like Uber or Lyft, you need to listen to this. Yes. So we took, I can't remember Uber or Lyft from our car rental to the port and we took Uber or Lyft. So one was Uber and one was Lyft. Um, from the port to the airport after a cruise. So we did use both of them. And so this is, if you are capable of walking half a mile with your luggage, I highly recommend you do this because um, otherwise you could run into the same problem we had. So um, when we were going from Avis car rental to the port, there's a massive lineup of cars and are- At the port. At the They're port. They're waiting to get into the port. Yes, and our driver said, this is as far as I'm going in the lineup, and he basically made us get out in the middle of the road. All the cars were stopped, um, and we probably should have complained. Probably. and <laughs> um, But we were too excited, and we weren't going to do it before the cruise, and then after the cruise, we forgot about it. But we basically had to cross five lanes of stop traffic to get into the parking lot to go across and walk across to the port. So we ended up walking probably the half a mile anyway. 
Um, which we were not really very impressed with having to do that. Just, it was like, I'm done, get out of the car, kind of, I'm not doing this anymore. He, because that the was, last turnaround for him was right there. And it was he's like, like, uh uh, ain't gonna happen, you're walking. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so, great. Um, and then when we got off the ship by the port, I order, tried to order Ubers, I tried to order lifts, and nobody would accept our drive, our, our ride to take us to the Long Beach airport. It would look like someone had accepted and then it would disappear. Yeah, so it was just not working for us. So mm. our tip for you, and this again, is if you are capable of walking with luggage. Uh, luggage for half a mile, there is a little park, and let me look at my notes here, it's called Harry Bridges Memorial Park. And this has kind of the last area where it's easy access for cars and Uber to get in and out of. So it's half a mile from where you get on and off the ship. It's at the corner of Queens Highway and Harbor Plaza, and it's about an eight minute walk. When you go there, the Uber drivers are, we walk there, we punched in for an Uber and we got one right away. So, or a Lyft, whichever one it was, um, because they don't have to get stuck in all the traffic. So I highly recommend mm -hmm. if you're able to do that walk with your luggage, um, there was lots of people waiting there for their Ubers and getting dropped off with their Ubers right in that spot. So, um, and I think that's the better way to go. Absolutely, if we were going to yeah. sail out of there again, I would just have my Uber drop us off there. Absolutely, yeah. So, and again, that is the, where were my notes? Harry Bridges Memorial Park. You can find it on Google Maps at the corner of Queens Highway and Harbor Plaza. There's a bus stop there. Um, yeah. It's kind of in the vicinity of the uh, Hotel Maya that a lot of people stay at the night before the cruise. So yeah, if you've heard that, of that. That's a little the... bit further down. It's about halfway yes. from the ship to the hotel. Maya, um, yeah. but I would highly recommend doing that because the fiasco that we went through was not yeah. worth it. So, and you know, you might not have the same experience with your your Uber or Lyft, but that's that was our experience. So that's about it for our likes and wishes here on the Carnival Panorama. I know this is a long video. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And also remember to subscribe here to Northern Viking Explorer. We'd love to share more videos coming up with you. We have another cruise book. We're not gonna tell you what it is yet, but those videos will be coming soon. So thank you so much for all of you who stuck through this and go check out our vlogs on the channel of the Panorama as well if you haven't watched those already. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care and goodbye.